This video is really for two types of people. Uh, either you clicked on this video because you're buying or you're selling barnwood. First thing we're gonna have to do is get comfortable because we're gonna be here a little while. Welcome to our warehouse. Uh, this is where we keep all of our wood stored. Uh, under a roof, there's no concrete floor, but it keeps all our wood dry, and it's a great place, and it's a great size. There's actually another back room behind there where we store all our beams and miscellaneous wood. Generally, when we come back from a barn or an outbuilding with a whole stack of barn wood, we either denail it there or denail it here we tend on just getting the wood, getting it back here and dealing with the nails then. This is important, no one wants to buy wood with nails in it. And if you do sell it with nails in it, you gotta mention it because someone's gonna be awfully upset if they paid a really good dollar for the wood that you have and they still gotta go denailing this stuff. You don't necessarily have to use a trailer. Sawhorses work great. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why this is the best option that we found so far. Couple tools that we use for this. The first one is the air denailer that pushes the nails out. That's how far either you're shooting the nail out of the wood or into the wood. You can't have nails going through equipment. It ruins blades, it ruins tops for your table saws. It's just not good. Let's just take a quick minute right now and I'll tell you a lessons learned type story. It involves one of these, the pressure. We've got it turned down now to about 45, that's about right. I don't want to shoot the nails right out of the board because I want to try and keep a hold of these nails and keep them all here. Like I said before, I don't want them in my tire. The very first time that I used one of these, I ordered it, it came and I was like, oh, right on, new tool, let me try it. Right out of the box, plugged her in, had her at like 110 PSI. I'm, I'm ready, I'm on saw horses and right into my shoe, right in between my toes and just stuck in. I was like, oh, oh, careful, careful. That's why we have the two by fours where it's lifted up, you know, that two inches or so. And when the nail gets fired through and hits there, never to be in my shoe again. So be careful, it's not a toy. There's always better ways to do things. We're just brushing this off the best we can and we're taking the 100 years worth of dirt off. This step alone, once the, once the wood is all stacked together and it's gonna look more presentable. Look at the cheese on that one. I'm not looking for perfect here. Uh, if you want perfect, you yeah, better go speak with my wife. <laughs> oh, she's gonna kill me. Something to keep in mind when you're doing this right now, you're cutting off the cracks. And every board that you cut off is more dollars that you're not gonna be getting. Uh, no matter what, this is gonna have to happen with this barnwood. You're gonna have to cut those cracks out, but it also goes to show you that the more careful you are taking this stuff off, the less you will have to cut off. So you can have cheese with your sandwiches. What we're doing right here is end cutting. Actually, we've already done this step for the most part out in the field. However, you don't get all the cracks out. And what that's gonna do is up the quality of your wood and it's gonna give the buyer a nice quality plant. A lot of times what I see when people are posting wood for sale, they always have a picture of the top of the wood, which is important, but I would say equally or more so important is the end of the whole bunk when it's put together with a fresh flush cut. We're just stacking these as we go into lengths. Now this will serve two purposes because when you're selling wood, there's a lot of people that don't understand board feet. Maybe they don't understand square feet. This step right here, we'll make sure that you have the inventory recorded and you can do the calculations so you're ready when you go to sell it, either in square foot, board foot, or linear foot. You're able to talk in all languages. 
That's important. Uh, the first stack that we're making are all the boards that you saw in the trailer. We're able to make a nice rectangular shape with these, which is great when you band them together and you go to transport them. Now, the second level is our red cedar. You'll notice that there's all different lengths, so it doesn't stack as nice. If you have access to equipment to move the stuff around, like a forklift or a skid steer or something of that nature, that makes it so much better. If you don't have access to equipment, then stacking this stuff, be very careful where you stack it because you don't want to move it again. Uh, this whole barnwood game is all about manual handling. The more that you can reduce that, the better. What we're doing here, we're not going to band this stuff. We've stacked it like this so it can easily be transferred over onto a trailer and we can band it on there. I am 46 inches away from you right now. Selling barnwood is a lot like art. So the more prep work that you can do on these boards, the more sellable it's gonna be. The presentation is gonna be nicer because it's gonna be clean. If you wanna learn more about barnwood, how to get it, where to find it, what to do with it once you get it, you're gonna to wanna to check our channel out. And we queued a video up for you. Hey, hit subscribe on the way by, appreciate it.